you've probably changed the car tyre, but have you ever changed the tyre of a 737? Well, I'm, the, well, I'm with the boys from Bozer of Aerospace, and we're doing just that. This is part of their home maintenance uh, for the TUI fleet that they're doing here at Dublin Airport. Meanwhile, just very casually in the background, there's an Emirates 777 about to head off to Dubai. This is such a cool experience. Stick around and I'll show you how it all works. But before we get to this, let's rewind and find out how I got myself into this situation. This is Dane Hoskins. He's the commercial director of Bozer, which is part of Femero Company, who provide aircraft maintenance at airports in Europe and North America. Dane wanted to shed a light on what happens behind the scenes and the people who help keep us all flying. So he reached out and said, are you interested? As a self-confessed AF geek, I said, yes, please. Thanks for that, Dane. So after a few phone calls and a lot of planning, I found myself airside at Dublin Airport. But what about this wheel? Why are we replacing it? Well, as part of the home base maintenance, the Bozer engineers keep an eye on the tyre pressure of every wheel. And during one of the regular nighttime checks, it discovered that this wheel wasn't keeping its pressure. As a result, the aircraft is not fit to fly until the wheel has been replaced. And that's how I found myself underneath a TUI 737 on a sunny spring day in Dublin. I quickly discovered that the process of changing a wheel starts well before we arrived at the aircraft. Aircraft engineer Kieran King showed me the Bozer tool shed and spare parts store here at Dublin Airport. This is not your ordinary tool shed. For very good reason, the aviation industry is highly regulated with a laser-like focus on safety. Different aircraft types have different tools, paperwork and calibration requirements attached to them. They're all certified, you have to be kept within calibration. It's, a, it's an ongoing process and it keeps one of our staff members extremely busy. So as we remove the wheel, it's a tread protector, so we'll be putting installing this. Yeah. So you have different one for it, different airlines uh, types, different aircraft types. So this will go across the treads and then this will protect the whole axle. As you're sliding the wheel like on and off, we'll be using this. Um, we'll be using the NG Max, so this is a wheel socket. So this is the socket here. So okay. we'll be putting our wrench on that to break it. And you'll also yeah. be using this for uh, when you're talking the back up with the torque wrench down. When it comes to spare parts, everything is recorded, registered and can be traced right back to the specific manufacturing batch what it is to be a batch number, everything is uh, traceable. Yes. Traceability is ma a massive thing in aviation. Yeah. So you're always looking out to make sure you wouldn't use. So even something as simple as tape, it can have a part number, batch number, it can have to be, uh, it'll have a shelf life expiry, so it has to be within date. Yes. Use. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's all taken very, uh, very seriously. Interestingly, the spare parts are actually owned by the airlines, not Bozer. This is because they become part of the aircraft and are therefore on the airline's asset registry. Within this tyre store, Bozer stores and maintains wheels for each of its main customers and the aircraft types they fly into Dublin. This ensures that a burst or damaged tyre can be fixed quickly to avoid delays. And um, you have brake units, so storage. Now that we have all the tools and parts we need, Let's get out to our TUI 737 and get this wheel changed. Obviously, I would be acting in the role of observer only. Roy and Kieran will be doing all the work. First, off came the hubcap. It turns out this is more like a car than I thought. Have a look at how well organized this toolbox is. It's designed this way so that every tool can be easily accounted for at the end of each job. Again, safety first. That said, I'd also imagine it'd be pretty hard to get your screwdriver back if it's already halfway to grease. Aircraft tyres are filled with nitrogen. Karen explained that this is for two reasons. One, nitrogen does not expand or contract as much as the aircraft changes altitude. And secondly, it's inert, that is, it doesn't explode. It also has another important function, you can use it to pump up a jack. And that's how easy it is, with the right tools, 
to release the wheel. Well, at least these guys make it look easy. Then the thread protector we saw earlier goes on and soon after that the faulty wheel is removed. Right, okay. And these are the brake pads? These are the brake pads, yeah. the brake, brake units. So you have a quick release uh, connector here for the hydraulics. Yeah. And you have a brake wire pin around the back. See how much it's worn. So you can see it there. If that, if that pin there becomes flush with that, that, that's an indication that the brake unit will want to be changed. So right, okay. This unit has plenty uh, left on it. So when you use pressure brakes, all these pistons move. And unstop your wheels. Your wheel slides in here together. So, if you were using, uh, doing a brake unit change, you just disconnect this cable and that'll allow the brake unit to slide off. Yes. Right, okay. So that's uh, what it's day one in the, the wheel change. With the axle cleaned, re greased, and the thread protector back on, we we're all ready for the new wheel. At this time, I should point out that despite being right next to the runway, neither Roy nor Kieran were even remotely distracted by the aircraft coming past. On the other hand, I was like a kid in the candy store. It was a glorious day for flying and I had a prime spot for all the action. Right, that's enough of being distracted by planes. There's work to be done. Let's get this wheel fitted. In case you're wondering, the cost of a new tyre is about 1500 US dollars and a reconditioned wheel about 8500 US dollars. Maybe a stupid question, but how do you know when it's tight enough? See so, that click in there? Yeah. We set the torque wrench to the torque that's in the manual. Yeah. And then when you get to that torque there, it'll just click out something. You can't. Right, okay. Yeah, you okay. can't overclock it if you keep going, but once you get to that click, it's just a little bit of pain. Yeah, yeah. The okay. Is the hubcap back on? Once the hubcap is on, it's time for the lock wire to ensure there's no way it can come off during flight. quick tyre pressure check and it's time for the final step of the wheel change process which actually takes place inside the cockpit. This final step involved resetting the aircraft's brakes and once that was done I couldn't resist asking some questions on what it's like to work in this industry. I just turned the battery on. Yeah. Um, you can set your, you can set your uh, parking brake just on battery power so if you have that light there on it, it, that's just a press the test. That's how you know your packing brake is set. Okay. So you press your brake pedals. Yes. Pull up your lever. Release your brake pedals, and that light should stay on. There's a brake pressure indicator. And um, but we'll have to bring on hydraulics now to get this up to full pressure. So it'll be uh, 
you sat in the APU now as you don't have external power connect. How many years have you been doing this? Uh, and eight years. Eight years, yeah. yeah. So f from school you went to uni? Uh, and then I went straight straight into a training program after school, yeah. I did my leaving cert and then I went straight into aviation. So I yeah. an apprenticeship and I uh, fell in love with it. I love, love aviation like that. Uh, yeah. so. I take it that this industry is a bit addictive. It is. You, you dedicate your life to it. It's, it's a real job that takes over your life, as in you need to know so much, so yeah. you're constantly thinking, and 80% of your brain will just be avi aviation knowledge. Yeah. So. Do you have to learn how to fly? Uh, no. 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 No, no, you don't have to learn how to fly. You do. But you, but you know how everything works? Yeah. So yeah. over the course of time, you learn all the different systems. Um, have to do function tests, operation tests, so yeah. all the flight controls. So you do over time learn bit by bit. Yeah. Uh, you probably work. you do engine runs, so you have to get engine run approval. Right. So if you uh, say you had uh, an actuator off on the engine or a component change, it might uh, require an idle engine run. So you may have to do an engine run then. Right. Up the sand. So yeah. you can do uh, idle runs here, and um, one engine for five minutes on sand. Some airports you can't, um, but you can do high power then. Um, okay. up to the, to the high power uh, stand for doing high power engine runs, and uh, you can bring it up to 90%. Right. So it's, uh, that's good fun. Yeah. So you're 25? 25. Yeah. So kids coming out of school now, would you recommend uh, aviation? Like any, any career, there's pros and cons. It's definitely exciting, it's different. Um, you will get a good you can go as far as you want with it. You, yes. could, you can uh, keep going and do different courses. Uh, it leads to lots of different opportunities. You can yeah. go on and be a pilot if you wanted. A manager of some sort. Uh, you can go into aircraft leasing. Yeah. There's lots of different routes you can take. Yeah. It opens a lot, lots of doors for you. Fantastic. Well, thank you. This has been fascinating. Now, I may not be a licensed engineer, but I, I have learned one thing, and that is I can now check the brakes on these aircraft. And uh, according to this little pin here, this uh, this brake system has got a bit of life left in it yet. It's uh, it's looking good. This has been such a cool experience. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, please give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment. Let me know if uh, you've learned something and uh, if you'd like to do something like this. Uh, I'm so grateful for the opportunity. Massive thanks to Boza and all the guys here for showing me around and letting me wave my camera around. It's been really, really cool. Uh, please check out my channel if you haven't subscribed, please do so. Uh, there's a lot more really cool uh, flight reviews and uh, behind the scenes stuff on the way. Uh, yeah, please subscribe, it means a lot. In the meantime, as always, happy travels.